All right. A golf ball is hit at 60 degrees to the horizontal with for, a speed of 40 meters per second. What is the velocity? The velocity of the ball when it reaches a height of 50 meters. And so what's going to happen here is the ball is going to be hit at a, an a initial velocity of 40 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees and it's going to go through the air and it's going to hit about 50 meters in the air. So right here is about, from here to here is 50 meters. Whoops, what did I just do? Sorry. And, and it's just going to keep going, go through an arc. Then it's going to start coming back down and then it's going to hit 50 meters again. This height right here, 50 meters. And then it's just going to, I'm just going to leave it there. Then it's just going to keep going till it hits the ground again. So what we need to do is find the velocity in the x-direction and find the velocity in the y-direction. So let's do the x-direction first. And we're going to use the, the trig function cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. We rearrange it so our initial velocity in the x-direction is going to be 40 meters per second times a cosine of 60, which equals 20 meters per second. And then to find the velocity in the y-direction, we're going to use uh, the sine function opposite over hypotenuse. And the initial velocity in the y-direction is 40 meters per second, the hypotenuse times the sine of 60, which equals 34.6 meters per second. And so now what we're going to do is find the final velocity in the y-direction at both of these heights using the fourth kinematic equation. Now this 20 meters per second, when it's constant all the way through, so it doesn't matter where the ball is, the, uh, the x direction is always going to be 20 meters per second. So what we're going to do here with this equation, because we want to isolate the v in the, in, in the y direction, the final v in the y direction, so we're going to take the square root of both sides, and then we're going to put in our numbers, so 34.64 meters per second squared is this number right here, plus 2 times the gravitational acceleration is negative 9.8 times a height of 50 meters. And what you're going to notice is that we have two numbers here. One of these is going to be used for, in, in the positive for the direction here. And then the negative is going to be used right here. And we're just going to, before we go further, let's just do a double check our unit check. So meters per second squared is this one right here. Meters per second squared is right here. And this meters is that meters. This right here is that meters per second. Meters squared over second squared. And this right here is also meters squared over second squared. And when you add those two up, it's meters squared over second squared. Let's take the square root is meters per second, which is our unit, so more than likely did this all right. So let's go and have a look at this 14.7 meters per second, plus and minus. So the plus is right here is 14.7 meters per second. Right here, the, we said a few minutes ago that the, the velocity in the x direction is always going to be 20 meters per second, right here. And here's the negative 14. Uh, 14.7 meters per second. So now what we're going to do is to find the resultant here to help find our final velocity, we're going to use Pythagoras theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We just need to isolate the C, C squared, so we're going to square root both sides. So C equals square root of A squared plus B squared. Put in our numbers, so 20 meters per second squared plus Notice we got the plus or minus, so we're going to have to do this twice just to double check, but we're going to end up with 24.8 meters per second. So this result in our final velocity is 24.8 meters per second at the height of 50 meters. Now, just to double check, we've got how many sig figs here is two, maximum is two, so our final answer has two sig figs. And let's just double check our unit check right here. Meters per second squared plus meters per second squared is meters squared over second squared. Take the square root as meters per second, and that's what we have.